Hi there, it's me Aslek, a third year medical student from GMC Manjeri. It's been so long since I have seen you guys, so I hope you all are doing fine. Third year exams are finally over and I'm a finally a medical student right now. I'm back home for a couple of days and I know it's been so long since I have, you know, did this recording kind of thing. So I thought I will sit and shoot one video. So today is kind of a reflection kind of video where I sit and, you know, like storytelling kind of video. And uh, I really don't know how this will turn out because this is the first time I'm doing something like this. Let's see what happens. When we jump to third year from second year, we'll be very happy because second year is huge, especially subjects like pathology. But third year, we have only three subjects, which are, you know, considerably simple subjects like ENT, interesting subject, simple. Ophthalmology, not that interesting, but simple. Community medicine, the longest subject in third year considerably difficult but still you can pass the examination if you have enough writing skills the yeah, community medicine is all about 30 percentage knowledge 70 percentage of writing and uh, skills but if you are a student of the new cbme curriculum in your third year you will also have one extra subject that is forensic medicine so let's begin with the largest subject among the three that is community medicine some people call it spm social and preventive medicine other people call it psm preventive social medicine whatever it is it's the same thing, SPM or community medicine. The book for this is Park Textbook of Community Medicine, which is of considerable volume and uh, it's considerably difficult to finish reading it. But it is a very interesting subject and a very interesting book. This subject describes about various medical fields, national health programs, how to prevent communicable diseases, how to prevent non-communicable diseases, etc, etc, etc. It's much more than simply diseases and their uh, management because community medicine is more about on the aspect of prevention. How do you prevent this disease in an individual level? How do you prevent this disease in a community level? Or how do you prevent this disease in a family level? For example, let's look at some previous year questions. Increasing number of falciparum malaria cases are reported from your PHC. PHC means primary health care center. So primary health care center area over the past two months. So as a medical officer of the PHC, so this community medicine, you know, makes you a medical officer in a PHC. Medical officer is the extreme you know, end of authority in a PHC. He runs the PHC. So the community medicine team makes you a medical officer in a PHC and ask you such and such diseases are here. So what will you do? So let's complete that question. So as a medical officer of the PHC, how will you tackle this situation? So there is an increasing number of malaria cases under your PHC. What will you do? How will you prevent this? Let's look at the next question. Survey done in your PHC that reveals increasing number of cardiovascular disease in the population. As a medical officer of PFC, prepare an action plan to address this problem. So the question number one was about a communicable disease under your jurisdiction or under your PHC. But question number two was about a non-communicable disease. So community medicine, you know, makes you or prepare you to deal with uh, both these kind of diseases. It also teaches protocols of important public health problems. For example, ADD, acute diarrheal disease or ARI, acute respiratory illness. Both of these are killers in pediatric population, especially in a country like India. So as a medical officer, you should know how to manage an acute diarrheal disease or an acute respiratory illness. So any child coming with respiratory illness or a diarrheal disease, you should know how to manage them because they are very deadly diseases if not treated properly. In exams of community medicine, they test this ability. Here's a previous year question from community medicine. Reshmi, a four-year-old who is attending the Anganwadi, has brought your PhD with a history of seven to eight episodes of flu stools. On examination, her systolic BP is 80 mg per mercury. How will you manage the case? Now, based on the history, we understand that it's a four-year-old child, so young child. She is coming with episodes of multiple episodes of diarrhea, and her BP is given as uh, like 80 that is hypotension so why is this bp important here that bp 80 millimeter of mercury represents hypotension you know the pressure or the blood pressure is actually the pressure excited by the blood in the blood vessel she is having like seven to eight episodes of um, diarrhea that means she is losing fluid so when there is reduction in the fluid content of the blood what happens is there is not enough blood to push the walls of the blood vessel so what happens is blood pressure drops, that is hypotension. And if the blood pressure drops, that is organ perfusion is affected. Organs don't receive enough blood. That can lead to tissue damage, etc. That means it's a very bad news for the child if we don't treat her properly right now. Let's have a small medical discussion. There is a newborn baby or a young child in your home and he or she develops a respiratory illness. 
so what will we do or what are the danger signs that you should look for take a pen and paper and write down the danger signs that i am about to say because these are very important points if you see these points in a child in your home or in your friend's home or wherever it is take this child immediately to hospital you ready for it so the danger sign that you should look for are the baby is not able to drink okay we are talking about a baby with a respiratory illness the baby is not able to drink the baby is not eating well feeding is affected point number 2 the baby is abnormally sleepy or difficulty to wake the baby baby is abnormally sleepy like lethargic baby that's a danger sign point number 3 strider in a calm child strider means noisy respiration so child is calm but there is a noisy respiration and point number 4 convulsions if the child is throwing convulsions along with respiratory illness that's a danger sign you should rush to the hospital another interesting thing about community medicine is we get to visit a lot of area outside the college for example we went to a village to take a clinical social case it means understanding the clinical and social aspect of a disease so we go to a home interview them about their disease maybe they are having a chronic illness like a malignancy or there is a pregnant lady or there is a child under 5 or there is a lactating mother we go to such homes and interview them about their disease or their difficulties so that we can understand the clinico social aspect of their health we also visit various health centers like community health centers primary health centers to get an exposure about how that system works the next subject is ENT also known as otolaryngology this is the most interesting subject among the three the reason we have op that is outpatient department we have ward postings and we also have operation theater postings that is ot postings in ent there is both medical and surgical field that makes ent very interesting because the doctor will prescribe the medicine and if it is not getting resolved by the medicine the same doctor will take a scalpel and do the surgery that is something you cannot see in general medicine because we only prescribe medicine in your know, general medicine aspect but coming to ent you have both a medicine aspect and a surgical aspect the book to read in ent is dingra that is a very good textbook it is enough for both your university preparations and neat pg preparations the final one is ophthalmology which deals with the disorders of eye in physiology that is first year we learn about eye using like 10 to 20 pages in physiology textbook but coming to third year we read about eye using an entire textbook so that's something i always tell my juniors because knowing where to stop reading is very important in mbbs because medicine is so vast so i always advise my juniors that knowing where to stop reading is very important in medicine because if you keep on reading we we'll lose valuable time especially in the first year textbook for ophthalmology are kurana and parsons textbook of ophthalmology parsons is a standard textbook conceptually explained like it's like the robins or you know guyton that kind of vibe but coming to kurana it's an indian author it's full of fact um you know so that you can write fluffy answers for your university examinations so if you're into this examination and all you can try kurana or if you need to understand the thing or if kurana is really you know not that interesting to you then you can try reading parson because it will make you understand the topic in a very simple way but there won't be enough points to score marks in an examination so that happens sometimes you know like to understand we read a book but it won't have a lot of points for examination so for exams we read another book that's a situation every medical student have to face we also had beautiful arts competition in our college during third year of mbbs and guess what our batch became the winners and that too with the highest lead in the history of our college i also went to trivandrum to spend time with my friend tarik who is a homeopathic doctor right now and it was a very good refreshing journey uh, because sometimes you need to go outside and you know, go for a journey to f- feel refreshed because there were times that uh, things were not going as they were supposed to be and there were hard times right everyone is going through some kind of hardship right so if you're really down mentally and you need a break take a break and go for a journey that will really help you out and finally before i end this video i also need to talk about fovia that's an app that me and my seven friends started last year fovia is actually an app based tuition program for first year mbbs students under the kerala university of health sciences it's in malayalam language it's like a senior teaching you important essay topics before the exam so that you can you know score better in your exams we received a very good response for our first batch so i take this moment to thank almighty team fovia and all the students who trusted us so that's all about third year so i'm a final year student right now yeah it's hectic and i know it's been so long since i uploaded my last video so i don't know whether youtube will recommend this to anyone so if you have stayed till this length and you know so this part of the video let me know in the comments by putting any emoji that you love 
this time i'm not recommending an emoji you put any emoji you love so that i know that you guys stay till this length final year is hectic but i promise you that i will make the videos coming there will be delays but the videos will come as long as i believe i have something valuable to share with you guys a video will be made on that subject thank you for being here see you on the next video